All right, so we're going to look at uh, gear ratio as a mechanical advantage um, in this case. So there's two ways to do it. We're going to do uh, the first where we treat it as a wheel and axle. Essentially, we're applying an effort force here. And we're going to say that that force then is then transmitted to the teeth here. So this is going to be our axle. And then the force from the purple gear to the force on the blue gear is actually the same. Uh, the forces um, are equal. They're and it's an action-reaction force pair. But then that force is going to be on an axle and it's going to be transmitted out here to um, a wheel. So we have two wheel and axle calculations and in this case we don't worry about what the gear train ratio is or the gear ratio is. It makes no difference um, what that ratio is because again we're treating it as a wheel going to an axle and then an axle going out to a wheel where the force transmitted here is equal. So it gives us some numbers. Um, it gives us a diameter of four inches, or a distance of four inches here, so that would be a, a diameter of eight. And then it tells us this gear um, has a radius of 1.5 inches to give us a diameter of three. So we could do um, a mechanical advantage of that. So the effort distance is going to be eight inches divided by a, um, resistance distance of three inches. So the mechanical advantage from this first simple machine here uh, would be that eight over three, which if you want to get an actual um, decimal number, uh, I'm just going to leave it as eight thirds uh, for now. And then if we do the bottom one and look at the mechanical advantage of that, our effort distance, now this is our effort and our resistance is out here, so our effort distance is 1.2 inches and our resistance distance is 4 times 2, so 8 inches. So our mechanical advantage for this one is going to be 1.2 over 8. And again, if you wanted to do um, a number, you could, you could do that too, but I'm just going to leave it as 1.2 over 8 just for for clarity's sake. And then when you find the compound machine, you're going to multiply those two together. So you have 8 thirds times 1.2 over 8. And then that total mechanical advantage, if I look at this here, here are my calculations. So here's the 8 thirds and then the 1.2 over 8. The 8s will cancel, leaving you with 1.2 over 3, which if you take 1.2 divided by three, you get a value of 0.4 for the mechanical advantage. So that's if you use wheel and axle stuff. The other way to do it is to do it with, um, with gear ratios. Because these two um, distances are the same, we can just treat it as the gear ratio here. Um, so if you were to take the output gear divided by the input gear, you're going to get the exact same thing. So if you take 60 teeth, or 24 teeth divided by 60 teeth, you're going to get 0.4. Um, the key is, is that the force is transmitted from axle to axle. So what I like to teach my students is if this is your effort force, that effort force is going to be transmitted to this axle right here. And then from this axle to this axle, because we're assuming that these are the same diameters, that force gets multiplied by the gear ratio. So the gear ratio is the mechanical advantage in this case when you go from axle to axle. So I would set this up as a wheel and axle, a gear train, and then an axle back to a wheel where the axle we're talking about is this little guy here. And We're going to make up a diameter for that. We'll just say it's an eighth of an inch. And I'll show you the calculation for that. So we're going to have three mechanical advantages here. So the first one is going to be eight inches because that's where the effort is located. That's the diameter of that effort arm divided by an eighth of an inch. So that's the mechanical advantage of the first wheel and axle, which is 64. Then you have your gear ratio, which is 60 over, or I'm sorry, 24 over 60. Sorry about that. 24 teeth over 60 teeth. And that gives you a value of 0.4. Um, so that's your mechanical advantage of that section. And then your mechanical advantage of the third one, well now you have an effort of one eighth of an inch. Again, if we go back to the picture right here, we're now, the force is now on this axle. 
So we've got a diameter of an eighth of an inch here, going to a diameter of eight inches for this one. And that gives you one over 64. So now if you multiply these three together, you can see that it's going to be 64 times 0.4 times 164. Those cancel, and you're left with 0.4. So this is how I would do it, um, so that you're utilizing that gear ratio to show that that affects your mechanical advantage. That the thing is, is you just have to be aware that that force has to be going from this axle to this axle. So it's kind of an intermediate. Otherwise, you have to look at your forces going from here to the tooth, and then from this tooth to this tooth, and then from this tooth out to here. Um, either way you look at it is fine. Um, I teach my students both ways, but I prefer using, if you're using a gear train, then to use your gear ratios in that, especially if you do a compound gear train or if you use um, a gear train with more than just two gears, um, and they're kind of walking through that. That's what I would do. Hope that helps. Have a great day.